This is Connor's time of the year. Yeah. Draft next week. He's grinding the film, doing his mocks and everything. But uh, what we're going to do today, we're going to do not what you think will happen, but what you would do. And what so, should happen. Yes. Basically so let's, what should let's happen. Let's overintroduce the concept like we do on this show. So this is if you were the GM right. and your mock draft in that sense. For every team. For every what team. You would do. This yeah. is the only one I do out of the year. Every other draft, mock draft is predictive. Mm. This is the one time where it's like, let's put all this aside. We're tired of talking about six quarterbacks in the right. top 12 and all of that. Here are the best players. This is not what you think will happen. No. This is what There's you think no should happen. This if, these, will happen. if these general managers were as smart as Connor Rogers, and they're not, right. none of them are, no. but if they were, this is what they would do. That's yeah. right. So, Look away, Michigan fans, uh, as we dive into don't, the mock. Don't hang around too long. So we're going to take a look at your notable selections because uh, Caleb Williams is going one, no surprise. But you have Drake May going two to Matthews Commanders, which I don't think is going to happen at this point because Doesn't Jane like Daniels it, is now a minus 350 favorite on DraftKings to go to. But you would take Drake May. I would. Now, I think there's more bust potential with Drake May, but I just like the ceiling. I think he sees the middle of the field much better, throws the middle of the field much better, bigger body, better arm. Uh, and I think his mobility has become drastically underrated because everybody's fixated on 2023 where his offense, quite frankly, sucked. The line was bad. The play calling was bad. He didn't stand a chance back there. Yes, Jaden Daniels is a good quarterback prospect. He's on this graphic for a reason. He goes to the Broncos at 12 here. I do have con some concerns about him handling pressure and some of the hits he'll take with that slender frame, but you love the running ability. But for Washington, I would personally go Drake May, who's my QB2 in this draft. Okay. Uh, and then, not necessarily chalky, but Marvin Harrison, Malik Mavis, the top two wide receivers, and they go three and four to you and then uh brock bowers to my new york giants followed by roma dunes and then you're very high on michael Penix relative to these other quarterbacks yeah i am he's qb3 for me i look at Penix, his pocket presence his arm he's got a howitzer of an arm the pre-snap ability is probably more advanced than any other quarterback in this draft and he's a guy that we've seen it on the big stage yes the last game we remember of him against Michigan was not great. The game before that against Texas was the best game of yep. any prospect at quarterback this season. So I look at the Raiders. Gardner Minshew's there. He could start out the season. They don't have a long-term answer. Penix would be a long-term answer. So according to you, my commanders are going to take <laughs> the use the guy. second <laughs> overall pick and use the, use it on the fourth best quarterback. Yeah, I would stand by that. Good times. But to good times. We're fair, back, baby. That's We're back. Consensus. High upside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's consensus. I, I, you know what's funny with Jaden Daniels? I think the floor is better. Mm. He's a good touch thrower. He's a great runner. When you can run, it gives you a floor. I don't know if he'll ever develop into a great pocket passer. I think he has the weakest arm of the top six quarterbacks. It's not a bad arm. It's just not the, by far, not even close to the strongest. But arm. I know there are a lot of underlying metrics that show basically like just he's he's ba he takes too much pressure. He's he, he he's bails. Ba yeah. He bails, and it's just it's like it's a very bad stat. And uh, the people that that are the the quarterbacks that have come out that have been very poor in this stat in terms of taking pressure have generally not worked right. out in the NFL. Like the, the list of big name bust quarterbacks often are all on the same list that Jaden Daniel is in terms of they take too much pressure. Yep. That's right. And if we learned anything about Matthew in Vegas is that he doesn't like people who bail on him. Uh, no. We were supposed to meet at the That's registration right. desk at the Venetian. Just saying. Uh, like, we had a plan. Going elsewhere. Like, listen, it's, it, 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 you, don't want, you don't want to listen to me, listen to Jack Nicholson. Like, <laughs> it, you know, if, if you don't follow the plan, people die. <laughs> That's what happens. It came close. That's what happens. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Well, you killed us repeatedly with various yeah. big names. <laughs> yes. Stars. Exactly. My name being slandered to Saquon Barkley. That's right. You know why? Because I'm on that wall. You need me on that wall. <laughs> yeah. You want me on that wall. Yeah. Me and Emmett the, Smith. The I was going to say, Emmett Smith's out there still arbitrary, <laughs> yeah. arbitrating. He was so this. baffled this by everything. Amazing. All right, let's take a look at the back end of the first round, starting off with Brian Thomas Jr. going to the Steelers at 20. Well, this is where it gets more fun. Brian Thomas Jr., the size and speed. I mean, really, to me, he's very similar to Christian Watson, that kind of vertical threat for the Steelers. Russell Wilson, get him throwing the ball down the field again, those moon balls we always joke about. You look at Troy Franklin for the Bills, another vertical threat, kind of a – not as fast as Will Fuller, but plays a similar style. I mean, the Bills got to throw the ball down the field, and, and Josh Allen, his arm is limitless. You look at Jalen Polk. I mean, he's one of the toughest players in this draft. Great run blocker. Concentration is off the charts. Will work the middle of the field. Better athlete than give it credit for. I, I think he's quietly uh, leaning towards going in the first round. I know DraftKings has had his odds above plus 300, so there might be some value there. And when you look at the Chiefs – Jalen Polk going in the first round? Polk, yeah, and then you look at the Chiefs with Ricky Pearsall. I don't think this one will happen, but – Pearsall can play inside and outside. He constantly generates separation. He catches everything. The Chiefs just don't have a guy like that. It frustrates you. 
Is yeah. It? The Rashi Rice situation impacts at all the yeah. Chiefs' decision making. Yeah, I think they have to take a wide receiver in the Honestly, receiver. I mean, like you go back to like different situations, everything like that, but this is a little bit like there were a concern. The reason they drafted Miko Hardman in the second round was because there were off the field concerns about Tyreek Hill that year. And that, that ended up getting resolved. But like that was a big like Miko Hardman wasn't on their radar that year, like or even wide receiver, but then they went out and drafted like a speed guy. In the, I believe in the second it was round. Was the second round, and he was more of a third round projection that year. Yeah, they like it seemed like they sort of reached for Miko Hardman because he was like the, it felt like the closest comp to Tyree Kill in the draft that they could. You know, just whatever yeah. a speed guy that could run some of those routes, and you know, years later and two teams later, he ends up catching a touchdown to <laughs> win the Super, the Super Bowl for them. Ball. So it yeah. all came, it all worked out for the Chiefs. Um, Pearsall, no, it's interesting, Ricky Pearsall. I don't see, um, I don't see Lad McConkey here. You don't, you don't think Lad McConkey's a first round guy? I don't, but he'll go in the top 40, 45 picks. It's just a deep wide receiver yeah. class that he got a little lost in, I'd say. So, so in my most recent dynasty rookie draft that I did, where you and I were texting, you were helping me out, and I took Lad McConkey. I should have taken Ricky Pearsall, is what you're telling me, because he was there. Drafting <laughs> before the draft happens is a hell it's, of a Well, it, it's stupid Scott Barrett. It's his <laughs> dumb league and his dumb I rules. You, you did pretty good. I did pretty good. I, have, I got Marvin Harrison. Mm. I, got, I got Lad McConkey. I got Tyrone Tr- Tracy, which is uh, Connor's sleeper guy. Okay. Everyone, everyone in the league got pissed when I took yeah, him. Which is the this best Connor's sne- s- sleeper guy. Just because you mentioned Marvin Harrison, there's been some chatter about you know some people have Malik Neighbors above Marvin Harrison. Yeah. Some people even have Roma Dunze uh, high relative yeah. to Harrison. Do you see that he exists as his kind of own tier after the quarterbacks? No, I think him and Malik are okay. side by side. Now, I think Marvin Harrison to me is the best player in the draft. So yeah. yes, you could argue then you could say he's in his own tier. But Malik is really special. They're just different. Like, what do you right. need? Do you need a guy that is explosive with and without the ball, or do you need a big-bodied player, good route runner, make things happen when the play breaks down? That's Marv. So it's a matter of what your receiving group needs. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.